the Global Hunger Index uh, is an attempt to measure food insecurity around the world. It's based on three indicators, infant mortality, uh, child underweight prevalence, and the FAO measure of hunger prevalence. Every year we also have a special theme, and this year the theme is resilience. Resilience literally means to bounce back. Uh, it's a term that's had a lot of popularity in the ecology literature in particular. In the development sense, though, we're expanding the definition, so it's not only bouncing back, it could be adapting to shocks and stresses. Uh, and in the case of really severe shocks or stresses, we'd also talk about transformative uh, capacity. So that would be doing something quite different. To give an example from a pastoralist setting, the traditional way that pastoralists cope with droughts is moving the herd around to find more water or more grazing land. In terms of more severe shocks, they may do something a bit different, like selling off livestock or slaughtering them uh, in order to cope with a particularly severe shock. But you can imagine in some communities that are exposed to very severe droughts or conflict, they may need to just change their livelihoods altogether. So that would be transformative responses. And that could involve things like out-migration. So in Somalia, for example, over the last 30 years, uh, more than half the country's population have moved overseas in response to conflict and drought and other factors. Different communities, different regions face different kinds of shocks. So in the Sahel and the Horn of Africa, drought is the most common shock. But in South Asia, it's the opposite problem. Lots of rainfall, floods, cyclones, and so on. So those are different kinds of shocks. The second factor would be just differences in the level of wealth. When confronted with a shock, you can deplete assets in the short run in order to cope with the shocks. But it's also a portfolio of assets that matters. Um, so as I said in the previous example, people may respond to a drought by moving their herd. But that may not work in some situations. For example, when there's a lot of conflict in a region, moving your herd around is not an option. So therefore, you might need other coping strategies like relying on remittances or relying on your neighbours. I think internationally, there's three things the development community can do to help build resilience globally. The first is to improve the monitoring and measurement of resilience uh, in order to target resources more effectively. The second is to try and break down the silos, uh, the barriers between relief and development activities. And the third really is that we need to incorporate and mainstream resilience building into development strategies. Traditionally, development strategies have really focused on core development activities like education, health, poverty reduction. But resilience is a slightly different goal and I think it needs some modification to existing development strategies. Chris Barrett said, measurement drives diagnosis and response. And I think that's exactly right. Now, if you flip that around, mismeasurement drives misdiagnosis and inappropriate responses. And at the moment, we have a real challenge in measuring resilience for several reasons. First, resilience or its opposite vulnerability is not quite the same as poverty. So we need a measurement system that, first of all, measures things at much higher frequency in order to, to pick up the impacts of shocks and also perennial shocks like uh, seasonal shortfalls in food consumption. And at the moment we don't really have that kind of system in place or if you feel like we have a system that's full of holes and inconsistent across countries. Well, unfortunately I think there's a sense that both communities have not quite done enough to permanently lift people out of poverty and vulnerability. Uh, particularly if you look at parts of Africa which have been receiving large amounts of humanitarian assistance since the 1970s and early 80s. Uh, and yet we're still seeing, uh, in the worst cases, famine there, chronic and acute food, food insecurity as well on almost an annual basis. In the Sahel, people are talking about a permanent crisis. So there's a sense there that we're not really doing enough. Um, I think it's fair to say that the humanitarian agencies have certainly done enough to prevent famine in most places uh, of the world, but we don't want a situation where communities have to beg for relief on almost an annual basis. We really want them to be able to stand on their own two feet.